Hello sailors, this is the Dodger Kebab, and have you ever wondered what the best video games ever are? Well, like all questions the human race has, Wikipedia has the answer. The best games from each year from 1977 until 2017. Who decided this list? Well, only the creme de la creme of big brain intellectuals, game journalists. There are no good Sonic the Hedgehog games. Fantastic level design. Sonic is awesome, right? Yeah. So let's see if these clowns got it right, or if like normal, you're better off yelling at the floor for answers. What's the best game ever? Sod off. I'm going to go from the years 1985 to 1990 in this video, because before that, as good as games like Nintendo's Donkey Kong or Namco's Galaga are, no one outside the most insane wants to see a video about joust, or even worse, adventure on the Atari 2600. I mean, look at the state of this. Retro games are cool, but stuff like this can just do one. So the two games journalists picked for this year are Gauntlet and Super Mario Brothers. I think we can all agree that Super Mario on the NES is one of the greatest games of all time. I'm not going to drag this out and tell you what the game is about because you already know, it's Super Mario. But the other game they chose for this year, Gauntlet, definitely not. Is this game iconic? Sure it is. Some of the music and sound effects in this game are near mythical levels. Warrior, your life force is running out. Oh. This doesn't mean that with the benefit of hindsight, this is still a good game. Remember, this Wikipedia list is not made from reviews of the games at the time, it's from aggregating those 100 best games lists that you see on large gaming websites. Gauntlet has utter bullshit level design, bad guys that are totally unavoidable, and a game mechanic that sees your health points tick down every second. But I could forgive these dickhead journalists if there was nothing better out this year, but there was. 1985 also saw the release of Sega's Hang On, which was fun and gave birth to the Super Scalar technology, which would become an arcade mainstay for the next decade. Maybe you only care about the gameplay and not the legacy of a title. Well, Space Harrier also came out this year from Sega. But it wasn't just Sega pumping out titles that made Gauntlet look crap. Konami put out Gradius this year, and Capcom put out Ghosts and Goblins. All of these are fantastic skill based arcade games that don't don't rely on cheap, unavoidable death game mechanics to keep the players pumping in the money. But I have worked out why Muppets at IGN would reward a shitter like Gauntlet over something that's good like Ghosts and Goblins. It's simple, too much water. So on the face of things, it's quite a solid lineup. Bubble Bobble is a fun arcade platform romp which still stands today. Legend of Zelda, yet another famous Nintendo game that doesn't need me to introduce it. Third on the list, Sega's Outrun. Obviously there's not going to be a better racing game than Outrun this year. Nothing beats the joy of racing down the track listening to the magical sound shower, so that's safe. Bubble Bobble would be the best platform game of the year if Sega didn't put out Alex Kidd in Miracle World in the same year. Sorry, there is no way Bubble Bobble can stand up to Alex Kidd. Alex Kidd is far better in every single respect. Better graphics, much deeper gameplay, far more variety, more bosses, flying machines, boats, swimming. I see the issue. Too much water. Now buckle up because I'm about to say something controversial. Is The Legend of Zelda on the NES a good game? Yes, we can all agree that it's great. Was it the RPG of the year? I'd argue, no. Why? 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 This same year was the release of Dragon Quest on the NES. Well, Famicom. I'm not saying Dragon Quest XI is better than Breath of the Wild. I'm saying that the first Zelda game was good, but the first Dragon Quest game was better. As an RPG, it's deeper, has far more elements to it, and it's just a way more richer experience. And the Grand High Lord of Games agrees. You got Legend of Zelda, where you walk around with a little bitch, and his little bitch ass sword, with a little shield, and he just goes, ha, 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 come on. Who wants to play that shit? I need to shoot some niggas. <laughs> 
Okay, so 1987, and the masterminds have decided that there are four of the greatest games ever from this year. Contra, the Konami run and gun game, which ended up being really popular on the NES. Double Dragon from Technos, the classic walk along beat em up, which I know I played a hell of a lot back in the day. Mike Tyson's Punch Out, which later got changed to Punch Out. Finally, R Type from IREM, one of the greatest shoot em ups of all time. My first issue is with Contra. Who the hell picks Contra? Contra over Mega Man that came out the same year. Who does that? What's wrong with you? I'm not saying Contra's bad, I'm just saying that Mega Man is so much better. So next we have Double Dragon. Is it good? Yeah, but with the benefit of hindsight, how the fuck did it get on this list? Who the fuck picks Double Dragon over Fantasy Star? How many times do you need to be dropped on your head as a child to say that this, this, this is the better game? Double Dragon was great in 1987, but let's be honest, it's utter dog now. It's slow, it has retarded punching mechanics it's just not good anymore fantasy star is a masterpiece which not only blew every console rpg out the water in 1987 but still to this day can be enjoyed by those who like turn-based rpgs as a side note even though the master system version is still great i actually think the japanese only ps2 remake is even better you can get an english patch version from various places on the internet to make this playable so this leads 1987 with Punch Out on the NES, which I don't think anyone will argue is still brilliant fun to this day. And R Type, IRM's corking shoot 'em up, which not only has maybe the best ever end of level one boss of all time, but it's still one of the best shooters in the genre. Not the best, it's not Thunder Force 4, but that's an argument for another time. <laughs> Only two games this year for some reason, Mega Man 2 and Super Mario 3. Now I'll say that both of these games are really good, and I would agree that Super Mario 3 is the greatest game of the year, but I've already suggested the first Mega Man game, so I'd remove Mega Man 2 from this list. But even without taking Mega Man 2 away, there are two very obvious games that demand placement here. How anyone could forget that 1988 was the year that the New Zealand story was released is totally beyond me. What a platformer that was and still still is today. Expertly crafted levels, fun bosses and tons of hidden secrets for the player to find make this an essential game to have on this list. The omission of the next game just shows me how little journalists actually know about gaming. I mean, how can I trust the opinion of a group of people who claim to know about gaming but don't include 1988's Rockstar Ate My Hamster on the list of the best games from 1988? Choose your rock stars, practice gig, record music and try to earn number one songs. I bet the clowns that work at IGN have never even heard of it. So how they can claim to be worthy of being an authority on gaming is an utter joke. The two games that the idiot journalists think are the best games to come out this year are SimCity and Prince of Persia. Now SimCity I can get behind, fantastic game, even in DOSBox shit o vision There is very little that can stop this game from being a great strategy and or chill out video game. But Prince of Persia, are you sure about that? It's alright, but it's hardly the sort of top draw effort I'd expect to see on this list of best games ever. But perhaps there was nothing else good out this year. Oh no, wait, yes there was. that list would you have chosen instead? Leave a comment below, but rest assured, whichever one you picked, you've done a better job than the plebs over IGN or GameSpot.
the final year I'll be covering in this video. And would you believe it, but the 110% IQ brains at IGN and GameSpot have done it. They've actually picked the best games of the year. Well done, guys. To be fair, it was Super Mario World on the Super Famicom, which is one of the greatest games known to man. As well as this, you've got The Secret of Monkey Island. Back when seeing the word Lucas on a media property didn't automatically make you vomit. Well, let's end it there. See you later. Abba. Uh,